everyone, I hope you are doing well. I always have so much to say and I want to update but then I always also try to look for the perfect timing and there's really never a perfect timing with a little one around because she's just, you know, by my side all the time and when she sleeps I have to whisper or do other things. So anyway, I just want to say that my rash is back a little bit here and here um, because I have been eating, you know, I have this food to avoid or healthy foods to avoid um, eczema video and citrus is one thing that you cannot overdo. Of course, the vitamin C is great. I love oranges and I've been eating like five a day. That's way too much. You know, too much of a good thing is also not very good. You know, citruses in Ayurveda is um, heating. It's an accumulation. So I've been feeling itchy down here for the past week. So the big trigger was yesterday when we had raclette. It's like melted cheese and I, I like mine really crispy. So when it comes to dairy and eczema, I have to say that highly processed, which is when you cook your cheese in high heat and things like that, or even pasteurized cheese, is not ideal for eczema. It's almost like a processed food. Actually, when you think about it, UHT milk, which is highly, highly processed, I think it's called ultra heat something, I don't know. It's processed in super high heat to kill off any bacteria and things like that. But the thing is, it also kills off a lot of enzymes and things that help you process dairy. It's an entirely different story if it's raw dairy from an organic farmer that you trust because raw dairy has all the enzymes, all the good bacteria. Yeah, so this is like a mini experiment to confirm that processed dairy does not work for eczema. You will flare up. So immediately after I ate that, I think one hour, I'm like, I, t I was telling my husband, oh no, my rash is coming out. She's poking us with a pencil. Stop it, dang us with a pencil. I mean, especially during vulnerable times when you have other things going on, which brings me to, I have this plant in my room, Monstera, and I realized that it has mold on the, on, on the roots because it was not covered with water. I have not transferred it to a um, soil. No wonder for the past three, four weeks, I've been feeling my tonsils a bit swollen. So really make sure when you have plants in the house that they are not moldy. Can you just give me a second, please? And then I'll be with you. Yeah, when you have plants, make sure they're not moldy. So here, I just sprinkled some baking soda and cinnamon on it. Hopefully it works. Any gardener out here, please let me know. This time I intend to update you every day on the skin. So yesterday was my first day flare up after lots of oranges and the cheese thing I told you. Today is the second day. Same procedure as before I take that pill um, the immune calm. I wanted to get the finely ground one, but this is coarse. Sea salt. Unboxing. Uh, coconut amino. Don't like the bubble wraps, but well, my favorite deodorant. Anyway, I've linked all this below. I created like a beacons account. I think maybe I can link it below. So I have like iHerb stuff that I often buy and on Amazon as well. I've listed them. So if you're interested, please check it out. Of course, uh, I get 5%, you get 5%. You know that already. And Amazon is an affiliate link. And this is my favorite floss. It's just pure unscented silk. This is a soap I use. Baby soap, fragrance free. Actually, the whole family uses this. And oh, I'm trying also Christopher's facial cream. Really clean ingredients. It does have vanilla essential oil. So let's see if my rash is okay with that. 
and this for the husband also Christopher's herbs support liver and gallbladder maybe that's good for me too to support liver okay that's it right now I'm working on the list of foods that you can eat I asked over on Instagram and here in the community I don't get a lot of response so if you are into eczema content please answer me when I ask <laughs> I get more response over at Instagram but when I ask if you guys prefer to chat with me here or on Instagram um, a lot of you say here so um, give me some feedback uh, yeah but from what I gathered you guys found it hard to know like what to eat so I'm just putting a list together so you can download it or we'll see how it goes okay update yesterday was the third day and you remember on the second day it was so good already my skin so we were at my mother-in-law's place and she made a very nice stew that has red wine in it so i was greedy i ate some and then it was so bad i shouldn't have because i thought it's getting better but i guess it's still quite imbalanced you remember i talk about th1 th2 and we shouldn't take anything with red grapes or red wine because it's in the skin of the grape after an hour i can feel my rash coming again like so bad and then it got so bad in the night that it was weeping oh, i was so terrible i'm not sure if it was just because of that or also because i had a high dose astralagus the problem is the more I research, the more complicated eczema is. So yeah, apparently if you have too much astralagus, which is what helps reduce TH2, too much of it can also increase TH17. Anyway, it's too much information. So if you take astralagus, just follow the instructions on the bottle that you're taking don't be like me trying to be my own doctor and take high dose and then i realize oh it increases th17 which it causes inflammation so it's really a lot of things to discover and as i am researching more i was about to put this food to eat oh baby's crying i was about to put this foods to eat list together and then i realized that it's much more complicated, so 